Hi guys, I thought I'd do a little update here and a review on some new stuff that I have got from AliExpress. This is a, a new microscope that I am testing out and see how it works. This is the one that I used to use, it's a high air brand and I got that recently through Amazon I believe some years ago and right now we're looking at an image actually on this one. Um, and I thought I'd just quickly show you how I tend to work. Um, I've got this little webcam over here with a wide angle lens on it so you can kind of see. In the background there you'll see I have a large screen that um, is actually a 42 inch uh, 4K TV which is what I use in order to look at the image while I'm working on it. Um, I happen to prefer that kind of setup. So some people depending on your visual acuity some people claim they can't work off a two-dimensional image and they need a, a binocular kind of situation uh, uh, and they will have like uh, eyepieces on them that they look at and I personally don't like that I don't um, I like to have my head free and I can look from the image to the board and so on and it just works better for me and I have no problems uh, working on it like that so that's my preference. Depending on your visual acuity you might have um, different experiences. In any case this um, one I've been using for a while, I said this is a new one we're going to try out. I also did a video on a small add-on star uh, microscope which uh, will also work for some people if you especially if you're on a budget or you're just doing it as a hobby and you don't want to spend you know like five hundred dollars or whatever it is on a more professional microscope then uh, that can be uh, a budget friendly way of doing it um, it kind of works it's a little bit restricted as to the size of the PCB that you can put under it but I've seen some people remove the actual uh, lens from the stand that comes with it and put it on a flexible arm so you can move it around uh, which makes it work with larger PCBs so that is another option but in this video I wanted to have a look and discuss uh, what we have here and why I wanted to have a look at some others as well so I'm going to change cameras hang on for a sec okay so here we are actually capturing the image that I have and it is not bad but you notice that in the uh, background over here it tends to, in, in some cases it's worse than in others but like over here it starts to get a little bit more blurred around the edges in some places that's something uh, right now it's not too bad but if I zoom out and something sometimes it can get worse than that and also um, this particular camera does not have a feature where I can turn off the automatic brightness so if I like for instance if I block the lens off and you'll see how it adjusts the brightness and if I change the the lightning lighting on it you see how it brings up the brightness again and just sometimes I want to be able to actually completely control the brightness with the external light um, usually just to get a little bit more depth vision or sometimes to be able to read the text that is on uh, some of these chips. Now these, these chips are easy to uh, read the text on but in some cases you can't. You can only really read it if it is, um, you know, brighter or or dimmer. <clears throat> but this is not an entirely um, good test. But it's it gives you a bit of an indication. I've run into worse situations than this. But if you look at this chip over here, it is very hard. It's not impossible to read what is um, printed on there, and I've currently got the uh, auto brightness turned on which is the default on the other one and as you can see if I vary the brightness 
it really doesn't make a great deal of difference but when I turn the auto brightness off now I can actually adjust the light in such a way that I can actually read it a little bit easier RT5370N as you can see I can I can vary the the brightness and just um, and sometimes when you're looking for cracks in capacitors and so on um, you might want to reduce the light a little bit because they might show up better um, and so on so that's why I like to have the feature that I can turn the auto brightness off so I'm just going to, I'll put this one aside, it's on a flexible arm so it actually, this one, this is how I normally use my microscopes um, so I can, I can move it anywhere on my uh, desk but there is a, a ring on here that you can uh, adjust for the uh, like the zoom in and out of, of the picture and then of course there is a a knob here to lower and raise it and of course there is a knob over there to move it up and down you can actually set a uh, a point there that you want it to stop at with that uh, ring over here this over here of course is the uh, gooseneck light that I use you really have to get one of those and uh, there's no choice the ring light as, as you'll see it's actually mounted on here has got very limited use in actual fact for um, PCB work. In any case, so let's switch back to the uh, microscope. So this particular one, um, I'm now twirling the uh, zoom. You see how it, this particular one only has one focal area here. So now it is focused in and if I want to see more on the boards I, I can go like this but I have to actually adjust the height of the which is okay uh, of the actual uh, which is an object I showed you earlier so um, see now, now I have it further away and so that's how this one works now let's switch to the other microscope okay so now we're on the other microscope and it gives us a pretty nice picture I think and it actually uh, seems to be a little better on the uh, lower left corner for instance over here we still have good resolution that is not a blur like the other one tends to blur a little bit on some of the corners so that's an improvement. Um, right now, if you look very carefully, let me see if I can. Over here, there's a little blue symbol there, uh, which is actually coming from the uh, microscope itself, and that is because uh, it tells me it's set for auto brightness, which is similar to what the other one does by default, but on this one, you can turn that off. This is the uh, camera and it actually came with a mouse and that mouse you will plug into the uh, uh, it's got a use two USB ports on that uh, camera okay. yeah it's got HCMI output and it has uh, USB sockets there for the uh, uh, one for the mouse so which is a little bit different and I didn't want to use a corded mouse with it obviously that would be a nuisance so I have, I have plugged in a, uh, a wireless mouse and while we're at it here um, this is the gooseneck light that I'm using and um, I'm not sure if I bought it from this uh, store or not but that's exactly what it is and I also bought a whole kit this one over here 
of all these Barlow lenses with it so I could experiment and what I have found is that only the 0.5 and the 0.75 Barlow lenses are really useful. Um, now what these things actually do for me is they give you more distance between your PCB and the actual um, the lens so that you have more room to work with. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And this is the uh, microscope. I bought the 10 times and 180 times one, which seems to be about right for PCB work. Uh, of course, I'll put links in the description for these things if you're interested in them. Alright, so I have this mouse over here connected and when I what I do is let's bring up the uh, so if I use that mouse and right click a, a little menu comes up and you can actually um, adjust the settings here um, there's a little mouse cursor there you'll probably see it moving on the on the menu and you have to move it not too fast otherwise it gets lost so over here for instance is the um, automatic exposure which I can turn off as you can see now it is, is, is dimmer and I can actually turn the uh, light right down uh, or even off as you can see it doesn't adjust the I can adjust completely control the brightness externally with the light and over here now I've turned on the ring light and now we actually see it's actually too blue and that you can actually fix by the uh, telling it to adjust the white balance you know it is back again to uh, normal and this this is kind of what it uh, looks like with the, the ring lights and um, <clears throat> it looks okay in this way but you can already see that there is some uh, which tip are we looking at this one see over here there's quite a bit of glare on the board and um, which is not a problem so much right now but when you put uh, flux on the boards when you're working on these components um, it can be hard to see what you are soldering so you really need one of these um, gooseneck lights in, in my opinion because you can actually adjust the uh, The light in such a way that that it it uh, hits it in a different angle and it can actually you give you a better a picture. I'm just kind of moving them around so you can kind of see a little bit there. But under normal circumstances. Um, you can actually turn on the uh, automatic brightness if you don't want to adjust it with the lights and of course there's a whole bunch of other settings there um, I find that the, the defaults are quite okay well it even has a, a, a zoom function you can do a quick digital zoom but of course the picture gets you know it deteriorates on the high zoom because it's a it's a digital zoom rather than a uh, so I don't see much point to that since you can zoom in and out you know with the lens anyway so that's how that works and click on it again and it is gone all right Now, interestingly with this one, as you remember the other one is when it was focused in and I 
turn to this uh, zoom control it will go blur straight away but this one actually stays sharper for longer and let's have a look but I have to do the similar thing I have to raise the lens a little bit now and if you're wondering how big those components are this is a millimeter scale that little component there is just a little larger than a, a, a milliliter in length and in fact if you look at here so are we there this is one of the smallest components over okay, there that little capacitor as you can see it is actually less than a millimeter long and um, probably what is that half a millimeter less than half a millimeter and I'm talking about this guy here so the smallest bit I've got for my soldering iron here actually looks huge when you put it next to it but um, so to use I have a another one here that I use for those really small components which is this uh, bent one it has a that's the finest one I've got that's what I would use on that little component there anyway <clears throat> so I think that this setup is actually a little better than the other one that I had so I'm quite pleased I think okay let's talk vinyl lenses uh, as I said I bought a kit of four of them I've got 0 0.3 0 0.5 which is the one I commonly use 0.75 and two times so right now I've got no bilo lens and I'm using the microscope straight and one of the things is that as you can see on the screen here the actual seven and a half centimeters 75 millimeters from the desk I'm focused in on that size and without the bio lens I find that um, like if you want to do some soldering or you want to use the heat gun on something it just gets in the way and I've, I've seen some other uh, people on other videos saying oh you use a bio lens when you want to have a wider field of vision that might be one of this it's purposes but the main purpose for me is that um, with the microscope that close um, it is very hard you know to to work with it so let's put on the first one is uh, 0 0.3 times so I'll just do that off camera for a second here okay so now I am focused in using the 0 0.3 Barlo lens and the actual microscope now is like 40 centimeters from my desk in fact you can't even see it on the uh, camera this is a, a 30 centimeter uh, ruler and it needs another 10 centimeters and well indeed of course if you uh, you can you can still zoom in but if you zoom out let me adjust it here okay so you can see you can you can see a great deal more of the board but it is still uh, about 40 centimeters from the, uh, the top there so I find that 
too high because now it's sitting in front of my screen and it's blocking my view so I don't expect to want to use that uh, 0 0.3 by low lens I don't think it has a great deal of use for me okay so now I have the 0 0.5 by low lens mounted and we are about I don't know 14 centimeters 14 and a half centimeters no 17 centimeters or 16 and a half to 17 centimeters on the desk I was losing the wrong scale on the wrong side and <clears throat> this is the one I use the most often I mean this gives me the ability there's plenty of room to get in there with a uh, soldering iron and so on um, and even the uh, heat gun plenty of room to get in there so this is the one I use the most often and it kind of ranges from um, at that scale here which is um, good enough you know to look at the uh, small components that you can work on there that's about or you can actually zoom out and still see quite a bit of the uh, board but let's try the 0 0.75 Lilo lens now so these things they just uh, screw onto the uh, bottom of the lens over here Right, so so right now it is getting uncomfortably close. It's almost the same as it was without. We are ten centimeters from the desk, <clears throat> and if I zoom out now, in now, Okay, so at this rate, um, I'm not quite focused in, but as you can see, it's, it's getting to be rather um, very uh, close to those components. Also, getting very wiggly. So on this particular one, on the other uh, microscope, when I use 0.75, it actually works differently. It seems to um, uh, actually have a better effect. But on this one, it's it's almost like it behaves the same as without any lens on there. It's too close. So the 0.5 is still the one that I would use. But you have quite a range here. You can focus in on them like that, or you can focus in much closer. Anyway, let's try the point the two times one. Okay, so this is the two times, and now it is like two and a half to three centimeters from the surface. So now you can't even get in there with anything. But I guess if you want to view something, now let's have a look how how closely we can zoom in on that on using using this one. Got a very short focus here, if you focus in on the um, PCB then the top of the components are totally blurred and if you 
focusing. Let me see if I can find. Oh, these are just blobs of solder. Here's a little component that got something written on it or not. If it's hard to keep it, stop it from moving. Well, it's got nothing written on it. So I can't see this uh, two times. There's some white lettering. Hard to keep it in focus. Anyway, I can't see much use for this uh, two times one either because it is so close to the board now that um, you know you couldn't even get in there. Okay, so back to the 0 0.5, and I think this is the one that I find the most usable. Yeah, we have a good 17, 17 and a half centimeters above the desk and <clears throat> this is zoomed out and when we zoom in have a, a fair good um, view of everything so that's about the right let me see if I can these are very small components uh, in case you're wondering what we're looking at See, these are less than a millimeter wide, and about just a tad larger than a millimeter tall. <clears throat> Some of the larger components, like that capacitor here, that's the larger one, as you can see. So, I would probably normally be roughly in that position there to uh, solder it. Like that, you can heat up the side of it like that. Alright, so that's what these bilo lenses are all about. As far as I'm concerned, the use, most useful thing about them is that you can vary the height from the lens to the uh, desk and gives you sufficient, this is about ideal for me, uh, sufficient distance to be able to work with it. So that's all we got for now and I would like uh, to remember to subscribe and to like and to hit bell icons or whatever is there uh, which will help the channel to become a little bit more popular which will allow me to make uh, better quality videos and more of them. So I'll see you guys later.